So let's take a look at how to build a tool to safely drain capacitors. Generally, you don't want to do a dead short. Now the primary reason for that is the amount of energy from a large capacitor can be very significant. If you don't use some sort of resistor to slow down the flow, you take a chance on like leaving a pit uh, on the chassis, like a spark pit, uh, you take a chance of uh, actually wrecking the capacitor because the momentary current flow through what is nearly zero ohms is way too high. It's just Ohm's law like everything else. So let's build our tool. And the tool is really simple. It's going to be, uh, you know, a clip and then our resistor and then another clip. And we'll put heat shrink over the whole resistor so that nothing's open. The wire I'm going to use is tiny, but it's very flexible. And this is a Teflon wire. It for sure can handle the voltage, just 1000 volt wire, the insulation is. You do want to be careful. These little, let me grab one, these little jumper leads here that we buy at a lot of uh, stores, these little jumper leads from China, a lot of these are really only rated for low voltage. When you're dealing with insulation that's rated for 50 volts or 100 or whatever, most of those aren't even rated, and you start getting up in that uh, uh, 5 to 600 volt range, you need to be careful about arcing through the insulation. Let's build the tool. For flexibility, I'm going to put the resistor in the middle. It might be easiest to actually hook it to one of the clips, but then I'm worried about bending it and eventually I'll break off the wire. I'm going to make it about this long and that should be in any chassis I do that should be plenty to reach around I actually finished the clip off camera and it was just soldering it together and heat shrinking it and what I'm going to do now is get an amplifier that's open we'll fire it up check the voltage and we'll find out how well our drain lead works to safely drain the capacitors before we work on an amp